Blackburn Rovers looking to end their 2017 away days with a win, but they stumble to a draw. We'll talk about the match and more on today's show. Oh, 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 oh. That's right, folks, back once again with another match review. you. This time talking about the Northampton Town Blackburn Rovers game. But before we get to the thick of things, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Game one of four in, in, in the next few days. Uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit more uh, joy to celebrate in this festive time. But today was it feels more like a defeat, even though for the first half we weren't really in the game. Uh, Pierre took the lead for North, Northampton Town in the 21st minute. And it wasn't until the second half that Blackburn Rose really uh, started to show their quality and, and, and start to dominate the game with a, with a crack and equaliser through Bradley Dack. I think that makes it nine for the season for him. And unfortunately, we did have the opportunities to win the game. Two clear golden chances that any other day of football uh, we would have we would have won. But uh, it was just not our day. Uh, Craig Conway had a goal and gift of a chance it was like a christmas present uh for craig conway wide open uh, i think anybody even even leon best i think someone else put that comment on there. leon best uh, chris brown luke varney they all would have put it in the back of the net but unfortunately craig conway had a had a game to forget really he had a bit of a stinker uh and then we had another g uh, golden opportunity and that was a penalty i think antonison was brought down so in a way it was he was um given due diligence with the penalty it was his penalty one you know his first refusal i guess because the skipper charlie mulgrew was not uh in the line that's another fact i'll talk about later uh and antonison thought he was good enough and confident enough to do it but what the, if you haven't seen the replay of it, it's probably one of the worst penalties ever um and and i'm sure uh there was a lot of lot of vocal opinion about it afterwards uh, conway could have had a chance to restore his his miss his blunder but didn't get the opportunity bradley dack again man full of confidence could have taken that penalty and i'm sure he would have tucked it away richard smallwood he knows how to thump that ball uh, another one who could have done. Whittingham, I'm not sure if he was on the pitch at that point. Whittingham uh, would have been another uh, great opportunity. But anyway, um, yeah, win number seven slips through our fingers, but we keep on our unbeaten run. Let's take a look more at the statistics itself. <laughs> Blackburn Rovers dominating possession 58% to Northampton's 42. Again, we dominated with shots 11 for us, seven for Northampton Town. We had six on target to their three, four corners, uh, one for Northampton Town. And we were not the dirtier side, even though we had both our centre halves, uh, Elliot Ward, and Paul Downing, both had yellow cards uh, in the match. And yes, Charlie Morgu was set to start the match, but uh, the gaffer made the last minute decision to pull him. Uh, apparently, he wasn't feeling too great. We'll hear more about that in the uh, talking heads later. Anyway, let's take a look at the starting lineups for <laughs> Northampton Town, first and foremost. Cornell in goal, Maloney, Taylor, Pierre, there he is, the goal scorer in the back. The Feds, Buchanan, Grimes, ex Rover, O'Toole, McGowan, Foley, Smith, and Long. As for Rovers, Raya in goal, Nayimbi, Downing, Ward, Williams, Conway, Smallwood, Whittingham got the nod, Dak, Graham, and Antonison. And these are my ratings for the players. Uh, Raya got a 70, made a couple of really good uh, saves. Nayimbi, I thought he had a bit of a stonker, to be honest with you, down in a six. Eddie Ward, not too bad for an early award performance. To be fair, I think I've seen him play a heck of a lot worse. I don't think he was at fault for the goal. Um, so, yeah, you know, I, I, I did give him a little bit of flack early doors because, you know, I'd rather, obviously, everybody would have wanted Mulgrew in there. But he came in, he did an okay job. Um, so, you know, yeah. uh, Williams got a seven, Conway had a five, Small one had a seven, Wittigo had a six, Bradley Dack had a seven, uh, Danny Graham had a six, and Antonison had a five. Obviously, Conway, Antonison both taking severe hits in their ratings but due to their blunderous errors that as professional footballers they should have stuck it in the back of the net so um not the greatest uh, performance by rovers especially going into a big bunch of fixtures and off the back of um of, of six on the spin um and then with the other results not going our favor uh we're gonna now start to stretch away um, at the top of the table. Shrewsbury also picked up a win, but we are still only three points adrift. Scunthorpe closing in on us, and that's going to be a massive uh, fixture, I think, on the 31st or the 30th of December, we take on Scunthorpe at Ewood Park. So that's going to be a monstrous uh, result, but um, a fixture. So, But we'll talk more about that when that comes up. We're still going to get past Rochdale next, uh, again, at Ewood Park. And like I said at the top of the show, it is 
the end of the away days for 2017. But we have three more games before the FA Cup breather um, to, to try and at least close the door and we'll close the gap a little bit on second place. And then maybe just maybe we can catch up a couple more points on Wigan. But right now they are playing great. And uh, if anything, we, we've, got to, we've got to make sure that we win the game at Ewood. And then hopefully they slip up one or two more times along the way. Well, that's what I've had to say. What's the gap had to say? Let's take a little listen to what he had to say after the match against Northampton Town. Immediate thoughts. Um, obviously disappointed to only take a point. Um, it's, it's always difficult when you give a team a goal start. Um, thought we just just couldn't get to our normal intensity. I think because the not right. but, um, the, the situation of, of probably a lot of the players, to be honest, uh, regarding their health. But uh, but we no excuses. We had to get on with it, and we uh, but we couldn't get to the levels we needed to or have been getting to really. Yeah, yeah. Um, listen, I don't want to make a big thing of it. It is what it is. We had to get on with it, and uh, but I, I think it did impact on the lack of intensity that we showed today. Well, listen, I don't know what you want me to say. You know, Craig's. Um, you know, apologise to the boys. Really, I think for going on the goalie and not taking care to put in the empty net. But um, and then a bit frustrating the penalty. Obviously, Mulgrew wasn't on the pitch to take the penalty. Uh, I think maybe Craig, who would have been my next choice, was probably a bit low on confidence, having just missed an open goal. Marcus felt confident about it. I, you know, I would have probably had Bradley next taking it, but um, Marcus felt confident, and so he took it and missed it. But um, yeah, but a bit frustrating. But credit to them, they dug in and. Um, and yet, you know, we haven't played as poorly as that for a long, long time. Well, I think undoubtedly we did enough to win it, but it's, uh, but still, it's, it's, um, it's taken, taken nothing away from them. They worked really hard, and, and um, they were a physical threat, obviously. Um, you know, we, Mulgrew, you know, whilst he's not a, a man mountain heading the ball, he would have given us um, probably made a few more contacts today and, and eased a little bit of the pressure from their direct wide free kicks and directness. No, he's been unwell. He hasn't trained all week. It was, um, but we were hoping that he would uh, just get out there and, and, um, and get through it. But he said he couldn't breathe during the warm-up. He was really low. His, his head was pounding. He, uh, he couldn't do it. So, uh, yeah, that decision was made after the warm-up. Does it throw the plans into disarray a little bit? Oh, listen, it's just not ideal, is it? He's the leader of the team, really. He's the captain. I think Samuel this morning woke up really ill as well, so he's unavailable. He travelled with us and uh, but couldn't couldn't uh, couldn't take part. Um, yeah, they weren't the only two, but we, as I said, we had to get on with it and probably did enough to get the, the points, but didn't didn't take the opportunities. I know it was an opportunity. That's all. It was with total respect to Northampton. They haven't been having a great time. I know they won last weekend, but it was an opportunity for us to just keep rolling on and uh, with a couple of home games to come. Who's to say we couldn't have got? You know, up to 10, 10 straight bounce wins, but um, so we're all disappointed in there. But um, we'll we'll take the point. We'll move on. A lot of games to go. No, so I think first and foremost, we've got to get the players fit, and um, hopefully they come in. They'll be in tomorrow, and then hopefully come in Boxing Day, ready to go, and um, trying to put the disappointment of this afternoon behind us. Yeah, it's, it's really difficult. You're trying to prepare a team for the game, and yet you've had players who haven't trained all week because they've been ill in their beds. It's um, and yet the um, the came along today hoping that they could get plenty of fluid get some medication and be all right but yeah both Dominic and um, Charlie didn't make it um, and again I, I'm trying not to make excuses to you but there's a few others out there that this dressing room is coughing and spluttering everywhere it's um, as the bench is coughing and spluttering I'd have to say but it's, we have to get on with it and oh, oh, what, about the oh, gap oh, to say? what about the fans and what about the players what's been going on on social media well, Derek Williams was the only comment I could grab shortly after the match. Frustrating game today. Should have had all three points, but we had a chance to make it right in a few days. Thanks to the travel support for making the journey down. Meanwhile, some of the fans, Max Swindlehurst, there's a lot of, um, I'm sorry, there's a lot of negativity out there today. Uh, obviously, it's a very bitter pill for me to swallow, and I'm sure it's a very bitter pill for all you other Rovers fans to swallow. But anyway, uh, so just suck it up for the next couple of minutes. Uh, Max Swindlehurst, hoping Conway never plays in blue and white again. Wasn't bad in previous years, but haven't seen a consistency shite player like him for quite some time. Bit harsh, <laughs> but it keeps on coming. I've said this, this is Emma Douglas. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Craig Conway is absolutely, I've abbreviated, or I've changed the word a little bit there, awful. Today, he was even worse than usual, so he's got his haters out there. I've uh, In the past, I've seen Conway being very... 
very uh, he has get, he's getting on a bit now and I'm sure this probably will be his last season and then Emma Barry Neville said why wasn't Conway or even Dak taking that penalty he didn't even look like scoring agreed 100% um, and as I mentioned earlier I think it was his penalty claim so he had first dib seeing as the skipper was not on the pitch moving forward Tom Marshall said massive wasted two points let's hope it isn't too critical at least we didn't lose Jack Lawrence also said got to be beating the bad teams agreed Kyle Smith can't complain too much after a great run but why didn't Conway take that penalty the guy never misses one strange decision oh well let's win the next game and get in them automatic promotion slots hashtag Rovers Simon Woodford said, two points drops, but 11 games in, unbeaten. On to Boxing Day. Jack Earnshaw said, the winning streak obviously wasn't going to last forever, but to consider we missed an open net and a penalty against the bottom four team isn't good enough. Dan Hughes says, pathetic result against one of the worst in the league. Rosie Moore says, celebrate that draw at home to Northampton because you were so good, weren't you? Classic time wasting and falling over. We got unlucky. Yeah, we didn't play well, but you look utter crap. Good afternoon to you all. That's Rosie Moore on the Facebook page. Meanwhile, Simon Smith said this in a bit of a more of a, a sentimental post. I just want to say this. On this day, 23 years ago, Rovers won a vital away game with a penalty to go top. Post-match, a Carlisle fan died as a result of the violence. Rovers didn't even go up anyway. On my 14th birthday, they went down to 5th, which is where they ended up. I'm pissed off too today. It's not the end of the world. Nobody died. So Wigan scabbed a narrow win and Shrewsbury won. Still a lot of road to tread yet. Come on, you blues. Declan Maldsley said, Their goalkeeper is a time-wasting turd. I saw him go to shake Derek Williams' hand at the end of the night. And Big D just ignored him. Class serves him right. Chris Martin also says, special mention to the Northampton keeper for some top class trolling of the away fans at the final whistle. You know, just to make us feel a little better about throwing away three points at the end. Andy Butterfan said, back-to-back -back home wins against Rochester and Scunthorpe. This will be forgotten and seven points out of nine would be a good Christmas. I agree with you there. We ain't going to win every game and when we are shit, it's important not to get beat. Okay, a missed late pen, but could prove a point gained come May. Woo. Oh, Grammar is my favourite. Frank Andrews said, finished 1-1, one, one, but thrown away all three. And Tonneson with a bad missed penalty and then put a good chance Why? I thought Conway would have took the pen. He used to, but at least not at the feet. Jack Farnworth, I think, once again, still third with the game in hand over fourth and five, fifth. So relax in it. Paul Lochem says, I know we're just all disappointed, but we're not going to win every game. We had the chances to win today, but to even it up, we didn't deserve to beat Charlton. Plenty of games to go, and hopefully a couple of decent signings early January to give us more attacking options. Onwards and upwards. Meanwhile, more, more players or more fans out there with their own opinions. Disgusting performance. Can't complain. Didn't deserve that win at all. And Tonneson should hang his head in shame. Craig Williams Owen said, poor result that today. We have a serious issue breaking teams down that set up for a point. Need to find a better player that can unlock a resolute defence in January. Because all the points we've dropped have been against teams like Northampton. We can't afford to be dropping points against these teams if we want an automatic promotion slot. Andrew Joseph Bauer says, can't see us catching Wigan. Two points dropped today. Michael Lee Nows said, this short and sweet, we need to win our next three games. Meanwhile, Northampton fans were in a little bit uh, more positive mood, obviously. Really good point. Thumbs up, Kevin Horton also said. That's a point on the account. Don't forget the steak dinner for the keeper. Till next time, Kitchen Seat USA signing off. Up the cobblers and Merry Christmas to all. Meanwhile, Matt, or at Timzine1903, said, Good result. Thought we were the better side. Overall, deserved more. Sloppy defender cost us three points, but I have taken... I'd happily taken one before the match. Woo! Well, that's the thoughts and comments of the fans. And uh, my final closing comments on the match. Yeah, it was a disappointing result. Obviously, we went into this. Even the cat predicted a win for Rovers. It, it, it's definitely two points dropped. But on the flip side, at halftime, we're 1-0 down. Uh, I think deep down in my mind, I was thinking I, I'll take a point, but, but it's not the end of the world. We did uh, play, I wouldn't say weakened side, but definitely a much changed side. I'm sure if Charlie Mulgrew was on the pitch, we would have taken all three points because I'm sure he would have put the penalty in the back of the net. But that's ifs, ands, and whats and buts. Uh, to be honest with you, just forget about it. Kick on to the next one. 
We ended 2017 away days with a point. It's not too bad. Uh, the run continues. We're unbeaten in a, in a whole bunch. I don't even know what the number is now. I've lost count. So we've just got to bring that mentality, the positive mentality, back to Ewood Park. Take down Rochdale. Take down Scunthorpe. And then we'll focus on Rotherham in the new year. Meanwhile, what's been going on around the grounds in the league? Well, let's take a look. Obviously, you probably heard throughout the show and throughout social media and throughout everything, Wigan thumped Oxford 7-0 at their gap. But let's not talk about that. Moving on to our next opponent, Rochdale picked up only a 1-1 draw. I think they were winning uh, until quite late on, but Walsall fought back to take a point. Our uh, opponents after Rochdale will be Scunthorpe. They were 3-1 winners over Southend and, and Scunthorpe now closing the gap a little bit. Uh, on, on us in third place. They are in fourth with 42 points and we are, uh, like I said, in third with 44 points. Our opponents on New Year's Day will be Rotherham. They're 2-1 winners over MK Dons and that puts Rotherham right back in the promotion or the playoff mix. Shrewsbury 2-0 winners um, against Portsmouth. Uh, at the bottom of the table, Berry they lost to Peterborough 3-0. Well, that's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. Yes, it's a little bit of a disappointing result, but hey, we cannot win them all. The, the run was going to end one way or another, but unfortunately it, it ended with a, with a draw and not a defeat. So that's a bit of a positive. Anyway, um, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. Uh, I also want to give a big shout out to the guys at the BRFCS forum. If you haven't checked out the forum, make sure you do so. There is a link in my description below. It's a great opportunity for you to chat with fans uh, around the world, around Lancashire, down the road, wherever, uh, about you know Blackburn Rovers performances, about the tran January transfer window and all that kind of goodness. Uh, so make sure you check that bad boy out. I'm also on Twitter, Facebook, if you want to keep up with me on the go. Uh, but yes, disappointing, frustrating, but we've got three more games right around the corner. So let's just build up to those bad boys next. Anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.